Okay, I'm going to do a quick whirlwind tour of uh, some of the areas of uh, metadata that we haven't really mentioned so far, um, but possibly some of the more obvious ones in some respects in terms of relating to what the library actually holds and another one of our responsibilities in terms of describing what's published in the UK in the uh, national bibliography. So, first of all, I just want to, one of those classic things of just defining terms here. Uh, when I talk about collection metadata, I'm really thinking about the uh, information, the metadata that we use to describe some of the inventory that we have in the library, effectively, the, you know, the, uh, the content that we hold. You know, previously, we would have called this things like a catalogue, etc. Um, really, what this does then is summarise the content that we are holding. It identifies, what I think of as key properties of that content in terms of you know, its title, identifiers, subjects, etc., and often establishes relationships with other uh, collection items. So, really, it can be thought of in a in very general sense as almost like a product label of sorts. Um, much more the case with you know, the mass produced items. The services that we've offered actually date back from before the library was formed, back to 1950, in what was called the British National Bibliography Limited. And for a long time, we offered price services in a variety of different ways to other libraries. We evolved through practically every different format and technology you can imagine, from print, fiche, CD-ROM, you name it, we tried it, we sold it, probably. And uh, we made a quite significant decision, though, in 2010, which was to begin to offer some of this metadata, or an increasing amount of this metadata, as part of an open metadata strategy and under uh, very, very permissive licensing, Creative Commons Zero. And, uh, you know, I think Ben and Mark were uh, some of the earliest users of our metadata back in those days in a just funded uh, project. These days, several years later, we now have over a thousand users, well, organizational users, around the world using different sets of that open metadata. And those exist in over 105 countries. We've got people from the Vatican to AIDS charities in Africa, Swiss finishing schools, you know, a completely wide organi uh, organizational uh, spread, really. Uh, corporates like uh, PBS in the States, the uh, equivalent of the you know, BBC, a uh, whole variety of different types of organizations reusing that, uh, that information. We've also collaborated with a number of other different organizations, such as Microsoft, uh, who work with the UK government, and uh, other developers on some of the issues in this, uh, in this period, you know, where everybody's been learning about this new thing called open data. And we have created this thing called the Linked Open British National Bibliography, which I'll come on to in a little bit more detail, but um, that's been recognised by the uh, UK <coughs> Cabinet Office as a uh, five-star uh, best practice exemplar for the public sector. And uh, more recently, the Open Data Institute has uh, certificated it with uh, also a 93% uh, rating concerning the, uh, the uh, service. And most usefully of all, it actually gets used to the tune of up to 2 million transactions a month. So, collection metadata, what is it we've actually got to offer? Well, catalogue data, information about what we hold at the British Library, from the manuscripts that we hold, the unique items, through the mass-produced books, the uh, title-level information for uh, serials or journals, maps, etc., etc., etc. A lot of information about the uh, material that we hold within the uh, collections of the British Library. We can also offer uh, subsets of information about articles that we hold at the library, where we have gone and um, uh, created separate pieces of metadata for each of those as part of our electronic table of contents service in our interlending uh, area up at Lawson Spa. And we put a couple up there for people to experiment with, crystallography and uh, paleontology, but we're also interested, I think, more recently in uh, looking at new ways of uh, exposing that metadata. Um, and also, of course, what I mentioned before, the, you know, the British National Bibliography. And Samples of all this material that I'm mentioning here is available, or are available online on the uh, data-free area of the uh, website. And we're quite happy to talk to people if they have particular projects in mind um, about those and where there may be some possibility to do a certain amount of customization. We have limited resources, so we can't really offer a complete you know, blank check for that kind of thing. But if you're interested in doing something with some of this metadata, then uh, by all means get in touch. So I'm going to use the, the British National Bibliography as a bit of a kind of case study uh, example. So what is it, really? Um, well, it's a record 
of material that's not just held at the British Library, but material that has been published in the UK from the period from 1950, also covers Ireland, and the uh, content really is at the title level rather than article level. It describes uh, books and you know, the first issues of journals published during that period. Its coverage includes both popular trade publications as well as research level material, so it really is a, you know, a picture of the whole of UK output. It covers uh, material both for adults and children, every kind of subject you can think of, all different types of languages. And it's got, I think the figure is even greater now, over 3.5 million <coughs> entries. So a comprehensive picture of uh, publication in the country over that period of time, the interests that have uh, emerged, for example, in the 60s, you know, larger amounts of books about space flight, more books about computation and uh, computing subjects through in the 80s, etc. So you can get almost get a, a reading of um, what the UK um, community has been interested in in that time, what its preoccupations have been, as well as some elements of uh, popular culture, of course, as well. So why open it up? Well, it's, as I mentioned, a catalogue or a uh, set of data that relates to the whole of UK publishing rather than it just being specific to an institution, such as the British Library. So it's much more reusable in some respects than some of our more unique uh, catalogue material. It's available under a very permissive licence, uh, Creative Commons Zero, and it includes information on all of these different entities. So we've actually marked up in our metadata many of the different things that you often look for in terms of text mining, in terms of you know, people, places, etc. And <coughs> you can get at them very easily within our data. And we've got a few queries on the, uh, uh, you know, the websites relating to how you might uh, look for some of those things. It's also pretty consistent throughout in terms of format and structure. So it's quite nice to actually work with. And, as I just mentioned, really reflects over 60 years of interests in, uh, in terms of publishing. Access, we can offer it as a data dump. We can offer it as a, uh, uh, a Sparkle output. Um, and, as I mentioned, we've got quite a few queries up there illustrating how you might uh, interact with it. There are over, I think it's nearly a, over 100 million uh, unique triples, uh, RDF triples, uh, for those of you who are interested in, in linked data. And so, a kind of quick summary then, what have people used it for? Well, a range of different reasons. Uh, Microsoft took a uh, cut uh, together with the collection, uh, from catalogue of the British Library to uh, add to their new and emerging you know, Bing book portal. Schools have taken it to enhance their catalogues uh, within their institutions. More recently, there was a uh, data portal uh, at Bath uh, where they've taken books about Bath or in, published in Bath, etc., to, uh, to uh, supplement the uh, other uh, cultural information on the sites. Obviously, people have taken it for author bibliographies. A particularly interesting one, I thought, was where somebody took uh, a raw cut of the data and weren't really interested in individual titles, uh, books at all. They were actually, actually interested in measuring uh, the way that uh, the amount of translations that have been made available in the UK has changed over time and what, those, what the languages of those translations have been during different periods. So that's much more of a, a situation where people can go in there, look at the language codes, look at the information within um, the entire set and build up a picture of how the culture of the nation and the composition of the nation has changed over time. More recently we've started talking to uh, Federico about the European Crime Project and what we might be able to, uh, to do there uh, with him. And also people have looked at things, or traditional things like building research lists, uh, sharing book recommendations of various different sorts by Twitter. And um, uh, quite an interesting one was where somebody took the, uh, just the author information that's contained in the National Bibliography and used it, because it contains dates of birth and death in many instances, to present contemporaneous authors on Wikipedia. So you might click on an author in Wikipedia and then find these authors were actually alive at the same time. So that's quite an other interesting way in which you can take information out of that larger corpus and reuse it in a quite a different kind of way. So I guess, you know, in summary, my challenge to you is to say we have um, a range of different data sets, including the National Bibliography, which are available for people to uh, reuse. We've tried to make them available in the most permissive way as possible, tried to open them up using formats and offer them using technologies which we believe to be the ones that people want to use. And we are interested in people taking that information uh, about 
UK publishing or our manuscripts or our uh, books and reusing it in the most exciting ways possible to delve into what has been made available in the UK or simply collected by the British Library over the last uh, few hundred years and uh, create something really interesting with it. So, go for it. <laughs>